Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, Tech Lead and Partner at Westfall. And first and foremost, happy 2021. Um, it's been, I would say, an eventful 2020. A lot of uh, very unforeseen circumstances. But one really good circumstance that came out is where we have taken PHP Community in 2020. And PHP is now better than ever in 2021. Now, this all started last year at the end, almost changing to 2020, where I was in my office and I just had to respond to all the critics out there uh, about PHP, people saying that PHP is dead, PHP is not used for enterprise, PHP cannot be scalable. I wanted to address all those guys and the support that you guys, the community has come out and over 20,000 hits on that video alone. But the work is not yet done. There's still a lot of critics out there of the language. In fact, uh, here are some of those guys. I see them right now. Oh, there is no such force. So the first thing about it is PHP is going to be even better than 2021. Uh, in 2021 because PHP 8 dropped. And this has a lot of significance for us. Number one, PHP 8 has a lot of enterprise level features. You've seen them. I made a video right here about it. Um, you know, looking at some of the syntax to make it more uh, professional, some of the stuff like switches, and especially the um, now variables and naming arguments. These things make language even more suited for the commercial usage. But more importantly, right, as I said, it's taken almost 10 years to go from five to seven with the train wreck of six, but from seven to eight, just within the normal life cycle, three years, that shows you that the language has a lot of supporters and a lot of people want to roll out this language. So that's the very good news for PHP. Keep taking a look at it. The speeds continue to improve from seven and then JIT just in time. Very, very exciting stuff right down their language. Not only that, right, but we've had PHP jumping into real time. We've got two cool things, Swole and Ratchet. You know, I've tried some of them in. I think it's really exciting, not just being left behind, but we're actually jumping out. And some of the reactions on this stuff, right, is that they're faster than JavaScript. It's amazing what PHP guys are coming up with. I'm not yet confirmed about this, but I'm very excited with Swole. So we got to go out, got to go and prove those guys wrong. When you are addressed, when your clients are asking you, you know exactly what to do. Point them to my channel, push them in, tell them PHP is back. On this special first video of 2021, I thought I'd remove our subscribers by actually doing some Q&A on some of the comments that appeared in my YouTube channel. And so just summarizing what this actually means is that he's asking um, if you're starting a new application, should you be planning for the application to grow really large uh, or should you really just do the MVP and then um, later on when he needs other things, try to stick it in and um, you know, basically it's about uh, scope sizing of a particular application. Now, when it comes to this, I have a couple of pointers on this. The first case is, um, is nobody, you don't have to, um, you need to right size your application, okay? So to give you an example, think about house. If you have a family of two people, they're probably going to be four people, maybe five at the most. They're not going to be a family of 15 people. So you have to build some allowance uh, of that as an application. Uh, software architect or a tech lead, but you don't have to go overboard with this kind of stuff. You don't have to over scope or look at scalability and things like that. Just one or two levels, you will know from experience whether an application will grow really, really large or really, really small. Now, a re response to this about crude applications is that most or every application that you build is going to be crude. I mean, crude stands for create, read, update, and delete. If you're not doing that, you're not storing any kind of data, right? So that's going to be some of the issues. The second point about that I want to make is that don't be afraid later on to rewrite the whole application, especially if it's the first um, 
the first version. Many, many applications are usually rewritten from the ground up after the first 10 years or five years or something like that. And no tech lead or anyone in charge of CTO should be afraid to say, look, I want to rewrite of the whole thing. Your needs change, your requirements change, things change. And the new version will be full of all the good stuff. There's usually a lot of technical debt built up over that point of time, but also you will understand your business a lot better. So don't be afraid of doing that. Let's say down the road, you've decided, all right, we need to put Java on the back end. We need some Python. We need some uh, Golang. We need this and re-architect the whole entire application. That being said, remember G2 or uh, PHP frameworks don't just do crude operations anymore. They hook up into caching. I've shown, demonstrated that they can hook up the APIs very easily. They are all very extendable. So you don't have to panic about the size of it. These things can handle a lot more than you think they can. Okay, so that, thanks for that question. Next question uh, from Host. Why YouTube uses uh, Python Django uh, framework? Why don't they use the PHP framework? Uh, that's actually a really, really good question. Um, if PHP is so good, why aren't all these big companies using them? Why don't we hear them all over the place? Now, I'm going to give you a couple of insights in the industry. The first thing, right, is that founders, when they're building a company, aren't usually too fixated about the kind of language they have. The most important thing they're usually trying to do is get some sort of product out the window. So you will notice that Dropbox used Python, uh, YouTube might have used Python at the start, but there's a whole suite of languages that big companies have used to a big amount of success. And the usual cause of it is what, what kind of team do you have available, right? As I said, if you already have a team who have a lot of Java or C sharp background or something, you will probably try to use that first and then transition into the, the correct language later on, or you just might stick with it, especially if your team is strong enough to grow that true forward. Now, that being said, right, PHP is that language that makes it a lot easier. But if you look at, you study, you look at eBay or you look at um, Amazon, these, you don't even know what languages they're using anymore. They just picked up whatever was there first. And you'll see a lot of this kind of experiences in the startup world because people just want to use whatever skill set they have or team to go and roll out projects. This is different from the, the consulting business or the agency business where you have to deliver projects on budget, on time. You have to do it in the best way with the most amount of programmers. So it's a totally different kind of thing. However, as a language continues to be more popular in terms of marketing and stuff, it will be more adopted. A lot of this actually has to do with branding and flavor, you know? I mean, McDonald's isn't the greatest hamburger on earth, but it's very popular and people know the brand. So it has a lot to do with branding and stuff. And I'm sure if you get a lot of CTOs who come on over to my channel and they watch what I'm saying about it, I'm sure they'll start considering PHP for the next startup that they're doing or the deployment of a software. Let's go to the next question. Daniel Torres says, my desk is a hot mess. Okay, fair point down there. But there is a method to this mess. In fact, my desk is extremely modular. Um, if you can see right at the back area, right? Yes, this area I consider the front part is like my ran, uh, high rapid access memory. There's not really a lot of stuff there, maybe a cup of coffee. I assure you that this stuff is not more than a couple of hours old. Uh, behind on the left hand side, this area here is where I usually have my microphone if I'm doing some sort of uh, this is all my, my video casting stuff somehow. And in the back area, especially Teddy there that you're seeing, these guys are getting ready for the recycle bin, but I just can't throw them away. They're very modular because each container doesn't talk to each other. So I can simply remove it without affecting each other. And this is a idea or concept where, you know, your application actually looks somewhat like this. It's got couple of modules there and then some really you know stuff that you want to work on you know the mail or bills or stuff and then they're not they're kind of like coded in so that they don't clash but where all the money is made all the good stuff 
the keyboard. This part is all very, very clear. And that's usually how I call my E2 application or my PHP application. You can have a lot of junk at the back, but the front part, the business end, smooth as silk. Guys, smooth as silk. Next question. Um, Satash Wa Singh says, I like any PHP framework with middleware support. Uh, for caching, I think Nginx set up with Vanish is a good way to move to scalable uh, applications. Um, really good point, putting this caching at Nginx level, right at the web server. Just a comment down here, right? When it comes to caching, I prefer to put the caching actually on the application side in the PHP because I am a developer, right? But there are a couple of other reasons. One, you get a lot more control because if you send pages, you don't want to cache. Sometimes you want to go page cache, you want to go um, data cache, you want to use Redis, memcache, or whatever you want to use in. The framework can handle that a lot better. That's the first point. Second point is that these things tend to be a very shotgun approach uh, from a high level. I only expect you to cache this you know, when you don't know about the code, you just want to catch the page by page on the application. That's, you know, probably a lot more, uh, you know, more, more shotgun approach of doing it. I would rather be a bit more specific, setting up from the framework level and getting that kind of extra optimization. And the third thing is it's just a lot easier to maintain, you know, you don't want all sorts of other applications, both on top here in the NJNC level and then in your application level. If you have a team of PHP developers who are familiar with the framework, I prefer everything to be loaded in that, that, that area. So good point, good question. Thanks very much for subscribing on that. And our final question um, comes from Jules A. Lionel, I rather learn JavaScript because it can be used for the backend, frontend, desktop apps, plugins, etc. That is a valid point, okay? JavaScript seems to find itself in every place that they're going for, and there's nothing wrong using JavaScript. Uh, if you're comfortable about it, just go ahead and use JavaScript. But I only have a couple of comments on this JavaScript. Uh, misconceived notion is, is more better way of saying it, is that the first point is front-end JavaScript is the same as back-end JavaScript. This is not exactly true. Now, I have nothing in this uh, bone here because I'm also a Vue.js uh, community member, but the languages are so different the way JavaScript is written, especially the way it's in the front end with uh, you know uh, Webpack and all the front end frameworks and the way it's done in back end where it's got Express or Sales or someone of all these things. You will find that while the syntax looks very similar, the way it's done is very different. That's one of the major points. And some people actually struggle on that. Somehow JavaScript, because of the fact that it's front and back, it has this thing like very meteor where, you know, it's neither here nor there. It makes it a bit hard to code that. So that's just, a, you know, a preference thing. Some people feel it, some people don't. So that's the first point. Uh, the other point about it is that, again, it suffers from the what color is my function. Uh, issue that means the added complexity of promises or real-time reaction um, language or functions right so you might not need this to deal with the real-time issue meaning that a function could be uh, completed uh, in process waiting for another function you will have to be a lot of callbacks just adding to that complexity that you probably do may not need most applications probably do not need that so that is a couple of caveats before you like this front and back. When it comes to things like desktop applications, you know, you've seen me running this stuff on XAMPP and running it on my desktop. I don't actually see any problem where you're actually running a browser and the code there. It makes it very easy to maintain it. If you could run it on an enterprise level with a backend server, these days it's very easy to do that. So desktop apps, not such a big issue. Uh, the one that probably you most be interested will be a hybrid app. That's only where JavaScript uh, is the king. Um, probably no option at the moment. In that case, I would say look at Vue.js. You know, we are not uh, anti-JavaScript down here. Okay, guys, so just some comments on that, on this idea that, oh, front end, back end is the same thing. No, that's just, there's very, very different coding down there. So if you want your comments to be answered on my channel, just keep submitting them. Please subscribe to my channel and then I'll be able to read it. I'll get your feedback on what I think is great or not. 
Uh, we're on our way to 1,000 subscribers, putting ourselves that PHP is back in business. That's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.